much. <laughs> Let me start then. I will let the students in. Bom dia a todos. Bem-vindos a mais uma uh, palestra da nossa série da introdução à engenharia de som. Hoje a gente vai ter a apresentação da professora Rosa da La Salle, de Barcelona. A Rosa vai contar para a gente da pesquisa dela na área de IoT aplicado à acústica. Mais especificamente, ela diz que ela trabalha com processamento de sinais em tempo real, sinais de áudio em tempo real. Então, ela vai me contar para a gente vários dos projetos que ela tem atuado, né, de, de avaliação sonora de ambientes e monitoramento de diversas coisas usando o som. Rosa, we are really uh, curious to know what you've been doing, so please, uh, the floor is yours, and thank you very much for accepting this invitation. Thank you all for, for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here uh, today with you. Um, well, I'll, I'll try to explain you uh, my research nowadays, um, and also, um, I think it's interesting to, to, to know Let's say where I where I um, come from in the in in the sense of of um, research because I think it's it's uh, quite uh, it says quite a lot uh, about uh, the type of uh, projects I am I am having today in 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 the research uh, group I, I belong to. So uh, this is my full name Rosa Maria Alzina Pages with two surnames. Uh, and I'm assistant professor in, in the research group on media technologies in La Salle, Universidad Ramon Llull, which is a, a university in, in Barcelona. Uh, so let's go. <laughs> uh, the, the origin, the, the, the beginnings, okay? Um, seems easy to, to, to think that maybe uh, for somebody that has been doing research for maybe around, not not yet 20 years, but more or less, uh, that probably uh, this person has uh, um, uh, several studies oriented to the same uh, area of application, in this, in this case, acoustics. Well, it's, it's not my case, okay? Um, I, I was, uh, my, my studies in engineering were about electronics and telecommunications. And actually I started uh, my PhD um, and finished it in, in 2012 about real-time signal processing in unispheric communications. Uh, we actually had in that moment in the research group that was in, in a research group in communications, also also in La Salle, uh, we had a project that we have been, uh, we have had funding for it for about maybe 16 years now, uh, that uh, consisted in, um, in a radio link, a unospheric link, uh, you know uh, more or less about uh, propagation in the ionosphere, that the ionosphere gets ionized by, by the sun, so it, it somehow behaves that it keeps a little bit the, the signal and you can propagate uh, long distances. But um, usually the long distances, we talk about uh, hundreds of kilometers. And in our case, uh, we had uh, one single link from Antarctica to Spain that was uh, 12, uh, 12,760 kilometers long with uh, five uh, ionospheric hops minimum. And well, uh, um, what we would uh, say in communications, a very hostile communications channel, okay? Very hostile. Uh, so I did my PhD here in the, um, I was working actually in the, um, in the receiver. So in Spain, uh, doing the signal processing in this receiver, we designed at that moment, both the transmitter and the receiver, so that uh, both uh, instruments uh, were able to generate the modulations uh, in the Antarctica, uh, transmit them using several several antennas, and receive them uh, not in Barcelona because um, the the radioelectric um, uh, pollution in Barcelona is, is quite is quite big. So we 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 had our antennas in the receiver just a little bit far away from Barcelona, like 70 kilometers uh, in the south. And, and in that receiver, we, we processed this information that you can imagine was um, 
really, uh, I mean, really um, difficult to get uh, proper data uh, in the sense that uh, the maximum uh, bit rate we managed to get with this link was several hundreds of bits per second. Okay, so um, the, the the most difficult thing here was um, the, the the actual propagation and the actual um, signal processing in the receiver so that you could um, try to, to rebuild, I would say, the signal that had been transmitted. So we were working in several different um, devices like DSPs, FPGAs, GPUs, uh, etc. Uh, for, for a matter of, of the, the computational load, we, we need to, to process real time. But actually, my PhD uh, was about modulation, acquisition, applied machine learning to the, all that all that data sounding so that we could know what was happening in the channel, wide band, narrow band, all, all these um, all these issues that are strictly strictly about about communications. Yeah. Uh, I put in this uh, in this slide this real life, real world here in, in bold uh, letters because uh, for me, in terms of research, it's a it's a key issue. You know, you you'll see that in the project that I will explain to you today. Um, this is a kind of uh, a common thing that that for me it's quite important to try to solve um, real life, real world problems. In this case, which is a, a, a kind of a strange uh, application, the idea was to have uh, a system to transmit the data uh, from the sensors, the geological and other kind of sensors that were deployed in Antarctica, um, assuming the fact that in winter uh, there's no body there. So, so some, we were designing some system that you can leave uh, and, and it could work just mm, with some energy, it could work more or less uh, alone. So also the, the energy that we, the, the power that we could have available for this system was, was limited also. Okay, so this, this, this is one of the things that I was, I wanted to highlight. Yeah, uh, this is a, a, um, the, the result of lots of years of work. It's not, mm, I'm not going to explain the, the, all the pos possible contributions, but mo mo most of them are about uh, modulations, real-time signal processing, um, acquisition, and all these uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithms applied in the detector uh, working real-time. Okay, th this, is my, this is my background, you know, I finished like... Uh, yeah, nine years ago, my my PhD, okay, and and keep just kept working uh, on that project because that that project is still alive today, okay. So so there there, there was uh, there was work to do and research to do, but uh, in La Salle, which is not uh, a very big uh, school, we have uh, six research groups and and this is around eighty uh, scientists, eighty researchers now. Um, suddenly, uh, in, in another group, just the group next to the one I was working with, uh, there was a, 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 a need from a project, no? an European project, that uh, they needed uh, a team lead. Um, in the project was about, about acoustics, acoustic signal processing, and the project was Life Dynamap. Uh, it was running from, from, this, from five years, it just ended two years ago. And they, they needed a, a team lead, somebody with experience in, in real life projects, with um, experience in, in real time signal processing. Uh, of course, if they could, they were looking for somebody expert in acoustic signal processing, which was not the case. But at least in the team, there were several experts on that. So um, this project had and has today already uh, two real life pilots deployed with sensors, uh, one in a suburban environment, which is in Rome, and another one in, in Milano, in, in, in an urban environment. And I was there, and it was like an offer, like, would you like to, to be the team lead of this project? And my answer was like, oh, okay, but I know nothing about acoustic signal processing. I know from another kind of uh, signal processing, not about acoustics. And, you know, uh, I would say you that uh, I learned, you know, I learned, uh, in the sense that that the part of real time was a relevant part, and and I could help on that. Uh, not really in the acoustics part in the beginning, but mm, you can study. You you already got your PhD. You you are um, you you have quite an experience uh, on your back, like of ten years of research. So uh, you just move on. Okay. Uh, what was the Dynamo project about? Uh, the Dynamo project was a project centered 
in the development of a low-cost uh, sensor network uh, for not real-time road traffic noise mapping. Okay, not noise mapping, but road traffic noise mapping. And what? Why I stop here and and, and just clarify this? Because our job in that project was to um, develop the artificial intelligence in order to discard all the data coming from the sensors that co did not correspond to road traffic noise. Everything else that happens <laughs> in the street that does not correspond to, to road traffic noise. So it was a, an European project, a life project, uh, together with several Italian partners and a German partner too. And um, we had this small piece of work, not so small, but in the sense that there was a partner uh, just uh, building the, the sensors, another one doing the acoustic uh, studies in the streets, another one uh, putting the sensors in the in the roads and in the streets. And, and we were just doing um, programming, coding, uh, uh, a small part that was called the ANET, the Anomalous Noise Event Detector, the Anomalous Noise Event Algorithm, um, so that it, um, it used uh, machine learning methods uh, to discard, for example, sirens, people talking, birds singing, um, horns, and I don't know, uh, industry uh, noise coming from works, and all this kind of noise that in a city and in a highway you can usually find, uh, but it should not be uh, integrated in, in a dynamic noise map if you pretend that this dynamic noise map uh, represents basically the rut traffic noise. Okay, not not all the other noise. This this comes from the fact that the European uh, Noise Directive um, asks the cities uh, big, like more than one hundred thousand people, uh, to to know about what's happening in terms of noise in their city. Um, but depending, uh, taking in the, taking into account the noise source. So they they ask for road traffic noise or railway noise or airport noise, you know, this this um, kind of uh, section. So Dynamap was facing the road traffic noise, which, as you know, in, in the cities, it's a, a major uh, noise problem and, and something to, to, to take into account. Of course, um, uh, one of the conclusions of this project is that uh, the other noise uh, that uh, occurs in, in cities and in highways, it's not negligible. You know, not not only the road traffic noise, obviously, it's not negligible. I mean, it affects people and their health. But there are other kinds of noise, especially related to works, especially related to leisure, especially related um, to airports and railways and trams and all this, that uh, should be also taken into account, especially if you think about... Um, about health or all this all this uh, link that the noise has with with health so i'm already into uh, real-time acoustic event detection real-time acoustic signal processing in the end so it has real time which was some something more or less i knew a little bit about signal processing of course to uh, applied machine learning to not acoustics but i learned and uh, this uh, final uh, issue that that uh, to take also into account is real life, real operation. Yeah. Um, of course, most of the stages, the first stages of research, are done in prototyping, in with a PC, with maybe with MATLAB, maybe with with Python, whatever. But in the end, uh, to implement uh, whatever you design and see how it really works when it, it's, it's in the street or how it really works when it's at home or how it really works when it's in the middle of a forest, which is another of the examples I will, I will more or less explain, uh, is important, at least for me. Okay, and, and, and as we, I work in a, in a school of engineering, I think that this idea of uh, everything we do research in the end has uh, somehow um, something back for people and something back for uh, trying to, for example, make the design of policies uh, more easier. No, uh, this it, it not only makes sense in the scientific terms, but it also makes sense in the social uh, view of, of research. <coughs> so uh, what other applications? We are working now in the, in the team uh, in all these applications. Yeah. The, the, the first one, which is the, the, the one that I already explained, uh, is about uh, road traffic noise and what happens in cities. Great. Um, but working with the elderly 
is also a research uh, application that we are we are uh, working now. Yeah, this this is a cow. Yeah, this is a cow, and and we are working also in farms and in other um, surprisingly mm, different places, like uh, farms, also uh, chicken farms. Yeah, uh, today nowadays uh, I I I lead two projects, one in in um in together with vets, both of them, one in in several farms uh, that they they have cows and they produce milk and all this, and another one. Uh, in farms where they uh, breed uh, broiler chicken, okay, they they grow uh, small chicken just to to sell them the, the meat, okay. Uh, this this one is quite usual also because all, all, everything related to leisure, which somehow is connected with this one, despite the type of noise and the noise source, of course, it's not it's not the same. And this is a woodpecker. Yeah, uh, we have been working also in in. Let's say environmental uh, issues like biodiversity. Yeah. So, um, what all these things have in common? What all these applications have in common? These four, these four issues: the real-time idea, the signal processing um, basis, uh, the applied machine learning, also applications, and of course, a real-life, uh, real operation. So, uh, working uh, exactly in 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 that application with a a goal, a certain goal. So this is the research group I work in. Uh, it's I explained I think in the beginning the research group on media technologies. So uh, we are three more or less big research lines. Uh, one in acoustics, strictly in acoustics, the, um, more the idea of uh, propagation and, and echo chamber. This 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 idea, yeah. Um, but our position in these projects it's uh, much more closer to the signal processing idea, not to this uh, other part of closer to measurements and all this all this stuff. So I belong to the signal processing research line. And finally, uh, the, the, there's also the interaction line in which with with them now we do not have any project, but um, it also makes sense in the sense that the, the research group, uh, its main goal is to, to um, try to achieve a more natural interaction between human beings, environment, and through these fields. So we have several projects all of them more or less having this this common uh, vision. So more projects. Yeah, this is the second one. It's it's active today, and I have uh, I decided to put some pictures uh, from the from the projects that I could that I was allowed to because some of them have several NDAs that do not really allow me to show some some of the things we're working with. Uh, this project is uh, funded. It's nearly finishing now. The first part. <clears throat> It's funded by European funds, despite the agency that pays us is a Catalan agency. And uh, we work in three lines, um, uh, some of them uh, listening uh, to that. Of course, it's, it's, it's co-talk, we work with COPS, okay? Uh, uh, in the, together with BETS of Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. Um, so we have several um, focus in this in this project. One of them is, is to, to listen to the, um, the vocalizations of cows in the deliveries. Another one is uh, to listen to the the cows uh, when they are hungry. They they change their vocalization, and also uh, one mm, really mm, let's say we are just starting on that uh, to follow uh, to try to follow the digestion the digestion. So we try you know as that that cows um, uh, they, their um, digestion is not is not as ours. They have a, a big like stomach, that's called the rumen, and we we, we try to listen to what's happening in the rumen. This is the this is uh, the sensor, yeah. The sensor we have not uh, made it. It's a really small <clears throat> recorder, okay. That we have designed. What we have designed is all the all the um, all all the things that that just um, allow the recorder to to record properly. You know that the, uh, it does not record. Um, any other um, you know, frictions or whatever, and and we have designed also this this um, this object uh, to to allow this uh, mm, this device to go in the room and exactly where we are interested in. So we're, what we're trying to find here, we are trying to find from uh, the heartbeat to the breath uh, uh, and the noise that the room does when it just is in the middle of, of digestion, okay? 
So this is one part. Another part is this device that we have also designed that we put it in here, uh, just in the neck, uh, which which is uh, easier for them uh, because if you put sensors outside in the farm, which on the, on the other hand we do because here there is a sensor that we have deployed just to listen to localizations, but you have to put it far because if not, they try to eat it. So um, the, the, this uh, idea of putting it in the in the neck here, just um, behind the, the head, is just for this reason. Just try to avoid uh, any any interaction uh, non non suitable from the animal with the with the sensor. Okay, uh, so we're working on that now, which is absolutely challenging. I can promise you because. Um, we had worked in the past, and we are working today with chicken. I will explain you later. But uh, this is different because sometimes you can listen. Uh, you can listen to one single animal. For example, here the farmer, which has helped us a lot, is just putting this sensor in the in the neck of the of the of the animal. And this idea was to have this animal quite separated from the others and just listen to, their, to, to the, the vocalizations of the, these animals that could be this, just open with uh, audacity. Yeah, uh, with which goal? Was trying to know um, about the, the um, intensity of these vocalizations, about the length, about the frequency, uh, how often they vocalize, etc. So try to, to get together with the vets, the, the, our colleagues, um, this information to try to know what's happening to the, to the animal. So we listen to single animals, uh, we listen to the groups also, uh, in the sense that also the, the behavior of the group of animals um, also gives information about what's happening in the farm. Of course, all, all of this is focused on, on, on one side, on animal welfare, which is something, something that uh, every day, uh, even the people buying products is more um, concerned about animal welfare, but of course, on the other side, and if you think about the, the, the vets and you think about the farmers and the milk producers, what they want is that the cows produce more milk. This is the, the, the idea. So if the animal is happy, let's say, yeah, uh, if the animal um, is not suffering for anything that's happening to, to, to her, um, then maybe it produces more milk and everybody is more happy. So uh, this, this was a little bit the... the um, the reason of the of the project, the original one, and we are there trying to help on that. So we are listening to it, we are recording the animals, we are labeling the types of vocalization together with the vets, and of course we are training a machine learning algorithm to identify all the all the former things, all this labeling, all these uh, issues. Uh, with which goal? Well, nowadays we are working. It's one of the sensors we are working with. We have this. We have um, built it from several uh, different pieces microphone, uh, Raspberry Pi, and other, other um, uh, already tested uh, electronic devices that can uh, give us the idea of a potential future prototype to deploy uh, in any, any uh, necklace of, of uh, any cow, because some of the cows already bring uh, several sensors. For example, to know if they move or not, uh, it's also an, an indicator for the farmers that they, if they have healthy cows, these cows should move. And if they don't, uh, the farmer is, is quite worried about it. So to, to put more sensors in the, those animals, uh, just to know more uh, what's happening to them. So uh, this idea of uh, a future sensor design ad hoc, like uh, much smaller and much uh, more precise for the type of application. We're testing now with, with commercial platforms, low cost commercial platforms, but just to know which is the, the real uh, computational load we need to implement what we are designing. Okay, this is one application. More applications at home. So the, the idea of uh, listening to our granny falling in the bathtub or whatever. We have a project now funded by the, the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovation. Yeah, uh, we have together with a, a company, with actually with a company and another research group. Um, and uh, the idea of this project is try to help in the first stages of, uh, let's say, dependency of uh, elderly people living alone. Okay, they are uh, still healthy, but they are a little bit old. So maybe they start having problems at home. Maybe uh, living alone. I mean, maybe they need the visit of one of a person every day or every two days or a call or this kind of this this uh, idea they are not really um ill people because we could not support that 
uh, what we are looking for here, um, a kind of behavioral monitoring, but not in the sense of listening to what they are doing, just listening if they woke up, more or less at what time they woke up, if they went to the kitchen, if we feel that maybe uh, he or she has had breakfast or not. Uh, th this kind of uh, idea of, um, if possible, transparent, uh, uh, seamless monitoring, you know, that uh, it's not a camera, it's much more or less intrusive than that. And what can we do with this? We can, for example, if something happens, uh, we have several sensors in the house, local sensors, uh, we can talk with the medical part of the project and say, okay, uh, we should set an alarm uh, if this person has not woken up uh, at the time of, of lunch, for, for instance. It's just one example. What we're really doing now in this project, we are designing the sound mapping from for, for the home, yeah, for the home of this uh, old, old person. And we are starting to identify several predefined events. Uh, where well, these events, it's not, uh, I don't know, a glass breaking, it could be, but it's not. It's much more related to to um, the behavior, yeah? The waking up, which which means uh, a, a group of sounds. The having breakfast also means a group of sounds, yeah? Um, the having breakfast is probably, or the having lunch or cooking lunch, uh, it's, there are several different noise uh, appearing in the kitchen. So you can, you can somehow follow identifying um, real time and in the place, in the proper sensor, uh, if there is activity there. And you can report, you can just report to us uh, the cloud saying, yeah, he or she is in the kitchen and it's probably cooking. We don't know whatever he or she is cooking. We don't know, I mean, it, it's not uh, It's not the issue. The issue is, is to identify if there's a regular um, behavioral situation in, in, in there, yeah? Uh, everything that could go further uh, would be probably something that uh, would be much more intrusive for the person, you know, for the life of the of the person. And this is uh, useful. And this uh, company and this uh, this uh, group of uh, doctors uh, are interested in this in this um, type of project because uh, they feel that it's quite useful in order to to detect the first stages of. Um, some some type of uh, diseases like uh, Alzheimer and all, all these uh, dementia, you know, uh, um, could help uh, to to know if the person has a normal dynamic uh, during the day for a longitudinal study, you know, not for one day or one week, maybe for three years, you know, which is much more useful. So this is another of the applications today. Uh, another time, implementing uh, algorithms in small devices with the final goal to be really tiny devices. Yeah, yeah. We are now testing with commercial uh, platforms, but with the idea of um, of uh, using in the end something a design ad hoc. This this other uh, project we call it Chicken Welfare. Uh, it's something similar to to the the one of the course I, I explained already before with the difference um, that here you cannot you cannot listen to one animal you know you, you have to listen always to all the all the farm and and here we have um, that also the double the double look to to know that what we are finding has uh, has some relationship with the welfare if they, these chickens are healthy or they are not if they uh, are um, seated properly or not if they can drink whatever they need or not, uh, but also because the farmer, which uh, his interest is mainly that this chicken, uh, after I don't know 45 days, I think it's more or less the period, uh, they they leave the farm with the maximum weight, you know, because uh, they can sell them with mm, better if they are big animals. Okay, so so um, somehow we are working in artificial intelligence algorithms so that. Uh, we can try to predict, uh, depending on the different variables, what variables we do have. We have variables uh, of the proper farm, temperature, humidity, uh, CO2, uh, et cetera, farm, uh, variables that the, the, the farmer is already measuring because uh, these variables uh, tells him that the, somehow the, the potential health of the, of the animals. Um, and on, on the other side, we, we try to, to have uh, the, the, the acoustics part, we listen to them, the maximum frequency, the peak frequency, the, 
the equivalent level, so if they are mm, uh, focalizing really high or not, uh, we have found already several correlations, um, several dependencies between the weight and their behavior. And this is quite, quite interesting to find. So we are trying to, to implement, um, to train and to implement a machine learning algorithm in order to, to, to be able to predict, for example, if you have 45 days of breathing, uh, I don't know, are we able in the day 10 to predict the, the mean weight of the, of the chicken uh, in day 45? Depending on all the variables we are already well, we already have in day ten or day fifteen, for example, we're working on that now. So uh, again, uh, the idea is to finish in a in a in a really small device that can be deployed in the farm, as already the farmer has the other uh, issues, uh, the, the other the CO2 uh, uh, measuring what's happening always in the uh, in the place where the chickens live and and the um, the temperature, the humidity, all, all the all the other sensors that the, the farmer is already managing. Okay, and the last project um, <clears throat> that we have open now, uh, it's not really an IoT. Uh, it, I mean, uh, it involves hardware, but it's not our hardware. It involves people, and and this is the reason that I I I wanted to show it to you. It's a project that appeared uh, during the lockdown. And it's a project we have together with IS Global, which is a health institute quite well known in, in Barcelona. And we pretended, we started during the lockdown and we are keeping still today and working in, on it. Um, it pretends to two to things. One thing was uh, to, to collect data and try to, to have a kind of um, soundscape map of Catalonia. Yeah, during the confinement, during the lockdown. And on the other hand, um, as a, uh, it happened at least here in Catalonia and in Spain in general, uh, as everything was closed, uh, shops, you know, uh, uh, most of the leisure uh, areas and all, all these, and really the, the cities, especially the cities, um, had their um, soundscape really changed. In some parts of Barcelona, uh, people were saying that uh, they had never listened to bird song, and they were at that moment. So it was a good moment uh, to try to raise the awareness of the of this noise issue that we know we have in the cities, but sometimes as the as the noise, especially the road traffic noise, has already always been there, um, you, you don't really realize until it stops or at, until it it really um, is, is decreased. So so it was this idea we 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 designed uh, we designed a questionnaire uh, just to ask people uh, that to, to fill it uh, a kind of perceptual questionnaire. And we asked also people to send short videos from their uh, from their uh, balcony. This is what it means. Sons of Balco is in Catalan and means sounds in the balcony. Okay, so it, it's something that you could do being uh, just uh, closed in your in your home. Yeah, uh, our work was to to collect this this all this data. We had more than 350 videos from around Catalonia with their questionnaires. And we are working now on the data. And actually, we are starting another campaign now from the International Noise Awareness Day, now in the end of April. Um, and we're working now on, on the comparison of the events that we can find in the videos, the images that appear in the videos. For example, um, here I, I put a, um, a picture of, of one video that has the sea, for example. Uh, there are several items in the, um, in the soundscape that are not about sound. Yeah? Uh, the experts, our experts in IS Global say that, uh, for example, the same level of noise uh, in your balcony, but if you see uh, some green part of the city or if you don't and you just see like a road, uh, the perception is mm, quite a lot of change. So the, the perception of the sound is better if you see a park than if you see a highway and maybe the, the, the level of noise is just the same, you know? So uh, this, um, all these issues, and the last one is the equivalent levels that we have collected from all the cities that had, um, had, wasn't, had wireless acoustic sensor networks. So we went to all the city councils in Catalonia that had deployed their wasn't and just asked with, uh, for, for all, all this data, just, just to mix this objective data with the subjective part coming from, from people. So we are not deploying any, any not yet, any real-time algorithm here. But uh, but we, we feel it's it's um, it's an interesting project, especially for for the um, awareness thing, you know, for for 
being able to reach uh, regular uh, homes, you know, no, no, not not from scientists, not from engineers, not from people that already are uh, technicians, and explaining them that what's happening in the street uh, it's it's important for, for for their life. Okay. From all these that I have explained, scientific contributions, I would say, not not I'm not interested at all uh, in in entering the the papers and all this uh, stuff, but I think that it's interesting to talk about to talk to to know about that uh, to be able to uh, to do all these projects properly, you have to work on the computational load of the algorithms. This is not always considered a kind of scientific contribution, you know, not only sometimes, but you have to work on that. If not, you can have a great uh, algorithm with uh, um, excellent accuracy that cannot be implemented in real time nearly anywhere, but in a huge uh, processor, you know. So this is one thing to take into account. The sensor design, this easy deployable uh, uh, sensor design, which is not at all uh, the idea of a commercial sensor. It's the idea of um, a prototyping sensor that we have designed for ourselves uh, to go to these first stages of project to test things. And if it works, and if we can uh, just adjust this signal processing uh, to the computational load allowable, then we find somebody that is really expert in in, uh, in sensor design and, and just ask him or her just to, to design the, the most suitable um, hardware for, to, to solve that, that problem. But we have designed already the real-time signal processing algorithm that should solve that, that issue. Uh, so this is the, 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 the following point. It is detection in diverse hardware platforms. We have to be flexible in the sense that we can test this in our PCs or in our servers. Uh, and it works great because we have it like three days uh, working and uh, we get an excellently trained algorithm. But uh, we have to see this already trained algorithm in the test stage, how it behaves, you know, just to just to know if, it, if this is feasible or it's just feasible in our research lab. Yeah. So this is another issue to take into into account. What else? Of course, uh, the algorithm design and the and the data analysis. Uh, there's a lot of work related to to the um, analysis of the different types of sound or noise that we're working with in the different projects. As you have seen, the the application uh, area is quite different one from the other, but the the basis. Yeah, are really similar. And here we have uh, other contributions that uh, appear not in any other of the previous projects, just because they are not funded. But we have been working in the, for example, in the um, in the separation of types of um, bats. Yeah, these pipistrellos, pipistrellos are different uh, species of of bats in Spain. Or we have um, also taught. Um, uh, we have also worked in the distinction of, of sounds in, in forests um, about woodpeckers, because uh, our uh, friends, bi biolo biologists in, in Madrid, tell us that it's a really excellent indicator of the biodiversity of a Spanish forest to know uh, the frequency and, um, and the idea of, of uh, uh, woodpeckers. So I think it's possible that I lost the, the shared screen. I try to hide back. Yeah. Okay. And uh, of course, the, the the idea of real time implementation of uh, in the end to say, okay, we are adapting this algorithm. Yeah. To to uh, maybe we assume that we cannot uh, get the maximum accuracy, but uh, we know that it's more important the possibility of being implemented real time in this place. So we assume that we are not working with an 85% of accuracy and we're working with a 79 but or 75, but it's much better to use it in the real operation environment rather than just uh, leaving it in the in the in the lab. So just finishing, yeah. Um, thoughts, some thoughts. I think it's it's uh, important from my point of view and from the type of projects that I am I, I am working on now and, and the ones that I'm looking for now, yeah, also looking for more projects. I think that, that in the future, or the future which starts now, um, I think that, that this idea of IoT and this idea of uh, acoustic signal processing, acoustic event detection, 
uh, has to be oriented to human, to perception, to well-being, even to animal welfare. Yeah? Th this idea of trying to improve the quality of life of people, but also, why not, of animals if, if possible. Mm -hmm. So to try to take into account not only this idea of objective measurement, but also uh, other things related especially to, to humans. I also think to, to, that, that it's relevant to, to think that, that uh, it should be low cost, small and easy deployable. So uh, we sometimes talk about uh, the sensor, yeah, the, this IoT sensor, um, like a kind of commodity, you know, something that should be easy to deploy, should be easy to code, should be easy to, to, to update. Yeah? Um, the relevant thing here is that um, we need a sensor not to evaluate the equivalent level, which is um, like uh, something quite easy to do, and maybe even with a microcontroller, you can more or less get that. We need to deploy here uh, signal processing algorithms with machine learning. So this uh, low cost, small, and easy deployable, is, it's, it's, not, mm, it's not so obvious, OK? And the last point, uh, and this, well, it's related to the, the, the former points, but, but uh, it's, I would say, one step more, yeah? is that it should be participative, inclusive, and, susten and sustainable. So it should be close to people um, and giving the option to people to be there somehow, yeah? Because uh, all the noise issues uh, at home with the all people or in the streets with the, the this leisure or, or road traffic noise or railway noise or all these noises that, that uh, makes our life a little bit less comfortable uh, is something that all citizens, especially citizens in cities, people living in the countryside, it's, 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 not, a, it's not a story. Yeah, but uh, especially in cities should be something that the, the people um, should, um, would be nice that, that the people would have some channels or some, um, uh, some, uh, places where to participate and, and talk about that. Yeah, and, and the first thing uh, to make this possible is that um, the people know, the people should know that this is a problem. And if they don't, this, this idea of awareness is, is really, really difficult. Okay, and that's all from my side. Uh, just, um, I hope you, you enjoyed and I'm absolutely open to answer to any of your questions. Um, <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Faza. Incredible. Thanks. You're re there's so many things that I'm. Yeah. <laughs> comes to mind. There's uh, so many ideas and uh, actually many questions as well. Uh, I will start with one question and then I will open to to everybody else. Uh, but I'm, I was very curious when you when you're talking about the the cow, listening yeah. to the cow, and you said that you could listen to the rumen. Uh, are you actually listening to it? Can you filter it out? Or are you looking at certain specific features? Like, so mm -hmm. the question is, are you really doing source separation and listening to the rumen, or are you looking at some specific uh, feature that comes from the rumen itself? Yeah, the, the, um, the wider interest of the vet uh, in that project is that uh, if, if we can, um, I mean, the, the last, last stage of this project would be to, to have um, a kind of bolus that already uh, are there several in, in this animal environment um, for the animal to just to swallow and to, and to, to be there in the, in the rumen or any other animal goats, they are working with goats and with, with sheep and with other animals and that, um, with the idea of, of trying to collect the maximum number of, um, uh, I would say, sounds from our side, but, but from their uh, point of view, they want to listen, if possible, to the heartbeat, they want to listen to the several uh, movements that the rumen does in order, in order to, to, to do the digestion. This, this idea- for instance, the heartbeat, do they really have to listen to the heartbeat or can they just know the, the rate? 
uh, we can what we do there is uh, to to listen to it. Yeah, it's quite particular to listen to the sounds in the room. Uh, we label it. We train the algorithm uh, so that the next time that the heart rate is uh, it's possible to listen to it because it's not always possible to listen to it. It depends on the place where the sensor is put in the in the room. Um, the the automatic algorithm can detect it. This is our work there. So, mm -hmm. so but we are now in a really uh, preliminary stage where we are trying to show, we are in the proof of concept. We are trying to show if this is possible because, because it's not obvious that um, you can listen properly from the room. And we are working not with a proper sensor in the room, we are working with a small recording. You know, so we we deploy this, this uh, bolus there, we have like 24 hours and we pick it up. Uh, and, and then we listen to it. And of course, if the, the next, I would say, not months, but years probably, uh, one of the huge piece of work is uh, to know whether uh, it's possible to have a sensor uh, with the battery and whatever there. Because uh, one thing is to put something there for what, 24 hours, and another thing is to leave it there for, I don't months. know, two weeks or months, you know? So um, yeah, we're listening. It's it's uh, it was something incredible the first time because we we put together um, the, this sensor together with a bed listening with a digital phonendoscope here in the in the in the cow and uh, and the environmental sound also and we have the three together and it was quite incredible to see the different um, how it, the sound was different in the few mm -hmm. places but at the same time. If the cow was uh, uh, vocalizing, was was doing a vocalization, it was obvious that in the three places we could identify it with the well with a different shape. Cool. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, there, there is uh, Felipe Ramos wants to ask something about the Dynamap, and then afterwards I will open for Daniel. There also has a question. For, please, guys, go ahead. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Well, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, thanks for your presentation. It was very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. I myself am working with uh, acoustic sensors for noise monitoring, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm curious about uh, the Dynamap the Dynamap project. And in the beginning of the presentation, uh, you mm -hmm. said that you you used an ARM architecture, I R A R M. And I'm curious, uh, is it a commercially available, available general purpose uh, system? Or did you guys, uh, you projected and it is specifically for this task? Yeah, th this, this uh, sensor is uh, actually, you could buy it if you, if you were interested in it. In it. It's, um, it was built by, uh, by an Italian company named uh, Blue Wave. Yeah, they are uh, experts in sensors, but they um, designed this sensor so that uh, several machine learning algorithms uh, could run on it. Yeah, so so they design a quite flexible sensor uh, that allowed, which is not a minor issue, allowed uh, the recording of several pieces of raw acoustic uh, data because we needed it. We need the raw acoustic data in order to label, to train, and to test the algorithm. We, we, we cannot work with the equivalent level uh, of, of, uh, of a street. It's OK for us, but it's not enough. So this sensor uh, could record, could uh, send the data, I think it was via 3G in, in a city, and, and could also have implemented these uh, libraries uh, solving these um, real-time problems, actually. Uh, our algorithm was implemented, uh, remember, in C, and it was um, like it got a label every around 33 uh, milliseconds, uh, which was average uh, every second. So we had just one decision per second, and the sensor decided at that moment if they if they uh, used that measure to to um, to conduct the noise map. So because it was road traffic noise, that that piece. Or if, it, or if it wasn't, and if it wasn't, it, it, in that project uh, we just discarded the sample, so uh, because it, it was it was not useful for the project. Of course, from our point of view, we can do lots of things with all these discarded uh, samples. Okay, but um, the idea was and is today because it's still working. Uh, I can add to the presentation the, the place where you can see the noise map that it's 
generated dynamically from Milan and from Rome. Um, and the, the idea was to, to be able to, to ensure that what was appearing in that map was only road traffic noise. So um, from our point of view, the, the success is that uh, we can say that really uh, the levels appearing there correspond to, to, to traffic noise. Okay, yeah, so it okay. was designed ad hoc, but, but I know that this company has been using this sensor for other projects. And, and I don't know, I, I know that, that Barcelona has several sensors from this company that are not working this way because this, this belongs to the project, but they can evaluate the equivalent level, they can send the data in, uh, to the cloud, into Centilo, into whatever structure that uh, allows you to, to gather all the, all the information. All right, and one more question, if you allow me. Uh, which kind of microphone are you using? In which project? <laughs> oh, in the Dynamap. On the Dynamap. In the Dynamap. Oh, I cannot answer to that because it was a part of the sensor design, and I, I mean, I cannot remember. I should um, just uh, check it, but I have not um, here. I mean, I'm not, not not by hand. But, but it's it not was, anything really was... special. It's just. No, no, it's quite uh, actually in the in the proper project because it was a long project, five year project. It's quite a long a long one. European projects most of the time are three year or three year long projects. And in the in the proper project, the the company wa was testing the um, the performance of the microphones um, already deployed in the street uh, because um, they were low cost. I I know they were they were. Um, they were built in China, I remember, as most of the microphones we use, but um, uh, they, they wanted to see the, 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 the um, maybe they, they even uh, modified their performance in time and they wanted to ensure that the, the, the sensors were stable. So also the microphone was under test in the, in the project. Because in okay. our in our case in our case in the equivalent level values it's no not so relevant probably, but in our case uh, the stability of the um, of the um, of the response to frequency of the microphone it's it's quite crucial because we 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 have to detect uh, have to detect events and of course we we have trained using uh, several spectrums corresponding to several several sounds. So if the microphone change, changes, you cannot ensure that the, that the algorithm is working properly. So stability for us is, is, is a key issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's about it. Thanks. <laughs> I will now let Daniel ask his question and then uh, we have William. Thanks Bruno, thanks Rosa for the lecture. And my question is related to the elders project that you said. Mm -hmm. uh, what what kind of problems do you face related to acquiring acquis acquiring information and data from people like privacy or parents' data? What what kind of problems are you facing, or or other projects that you have with people? Can can you yeah. say how how do you deal with these pro problems? Yeah, these these are there are several things to face there, and and some of them uh, correspond to the ethics of of of, the, of our university. Starting for that, we have an ethics committee that all the projects are submitted to to this ethics committee. This what does what does this mean? This means that for this project, for example, we have recorded several hours uh, of the life of this person uh, to know what um, if, for example, if the places where we decided to put the sensors are the most suitable places. Because this is another this is another uh, axis of the problem, let's say. Yeah? But but uh, so this this sort of issue is now during the project we have recorded uh, data in that house. So this privacy issue uh, is, is dangerous. So what what our what are our compromises there? Uh, first of all, that the person living um, in in that home knows everything we have recorded. The second is that all their family, all her family, she's a woman, uh, know about the project and do completely agree uh, to this to this kind of tests. Yeah. And the third is that uh, the place uh, where we save this data and the people that have access to this data. Okay, that it's only the members of the team, no students, no, you know, no, no, no other, uh, in some projects where we record in the street, for instance, 
we share the data with the students to, to, to do several projects and there's no problem, not, not in this one. Okay. And actually, if you have seen, I have not given much information about it, not, not even real pictures because I cannot so so just explain the the technical part and and leave it there so but do you the, the record the we, actual waveform or do you record only levels we no we have been recording for two weeks all that what's happening in the house in all the rooms except from the bathroom okay yeah so this data we have in a server uh quite protected for uh with the help of our uh, um systems uh you know computer science people and all this all this uh you know to, to try to avoid any problems of hacking IT, with, nice. with this with this data and our compromise is that uh once we have all the algorithms trained this data will be destroyed and will be no no uh you know no no um, backups um, anywhere and the, the project finishes we will destroy this with the the assumption that we are asking for another funded project with these people and if that if we really manage to 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 continue with another project this this uh, i mean we can keep it until we really finish this this collaboration but but of course no publications no papers no uh, yeah we, you can you can we can do papers about the algorithm for example yeah but not about the the data which in in other projects we can and we do actually work on the data because it's also a matter of knowledge when you have a huge data set as we have now about rome and from rome and milano that we have a more than 300 hours uh, data set just about to 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 publish yeah uh, it's interesting to put it in the scientific community for other people to work with but also to explain what's happening there what you have found there, yeah, the, the distribution of events, the you know, the distribution of levels, uh, all this, uh, all this analysis that we do uh, over this over this data. So yeah, the, the ethics the ethics part in these projects, and you would be surprised or not, I don't know, <laughs> about the ethics part uh, also in animal projects, you know, in farms, in all of them, in chickens, in cows. Um, in all of them, we have to sign and we have to agree to to quite strict um ethical principles which of course are not about uh publishing the vocalizations of the cow this is not a problem but uh the the images uh, for example pictures and all this stuff it's it's you can show it but mm, not all of them and not when you manipulate all the all the sensors it's it's quite uh sensible uh you know um sensible data also there. with animals mm -hmm. thanks <laughs> Thank you. So I will let Will, I guess Will oh. wants to add a bit about INAD as well. <laughs> yeah, in Brazil, we also have the International uh, Noise Awareness Day, the Brazilian branch to say. So I was very pleased and happy to, to hear that you are also carrying out the activities over there. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice to know that. And I, I'd like to invite uh, all the Brazilians, our colleagues to, to join this and talk about sound and how it affects our life. Well, uh, on about... the 28th, right? Sorry? On the 28th of April. Yeah, the 28th follow, of April. Following at yeah. Instagram. Instagram, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have some, we're planning uh, several virtual activities since, well, we have a, mm -hmm. this situation. And I, I, I invite you to, to join us. Well, Thank concerning you. Thank you. concerning the uh, the research, uh, congrats! It's it's amazing. We we have a small group here in Brazil. We are researching embedded devices for audio, acoustics, and vibration. Mm -hmm. So Philip is working with me, and we have tried several different uh, hardware microphones, digital MEMS microphones, analog, the Raspberry, uh, uh, Arduino, Tensi boards. So we may exchange some some information, mm -hmm. and. Uh, my question is, uh, considering the, the monitoring inside the house, uh, are you using um, a system that you have several different uh, channels to input the data or uh, are you switching or are you monitoring at the same time? Because as you have a compact system, I I'm wondering, well, you may uh, limit the number of channels to be a, a cheaper version, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we thank you for the question and, and the invitation. Um, we do also work, the sensors we have designed, we do also work with MEMS. It's 
probably the, the easiest uh, way to, to, to have something that you know works, let's say. Um, we do nowadays work in the house uh, with all the sensors uh, listening to at, at the same time, yeah. Mm. Because one of the things we are working with, I, I didn't explain today, but one of, of uh, our PhD, PhD students that is also working in this project, it's working in a PhD um, about artificial intelligence and redundancy of data. So um, facing the problem of the elderly at home, where one of the issues is try to try to help in this uh, possible risk situation, in this uh, falls, you know, um, illnesses, whatever. Um, for the moment, this idea of um, listening to all the sensors at the same time gives us much more information about exactly what's happening in the house. Yeah. Um, we have to, to, I have to say that we are in the, not in the beginning of the project, let's say in the middle more or less. And when the company that, that is hiring us uh, will have to decide the price of the final wireless acoustic sensor network to put there, probably this one will be one of the issues, you know, the, the, the um, yeah, the, 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 how, how we can make this system more efficient uh, without losing its main uh, characteristics and, and, and advantages. But nowadays we're listening uh, to all the sensors because we actually use um, the information from all the sensors to take a decision at the same time. Yeah. So, so this is part of what we are designing now. We will see if then, for example, the house we are analyzing, we are monitoring now has six sensors, and and maybe in the end it makes sense to have three and three, whatever. You know, not not sure, but um, today we are working with all of them. Yeah. Are these sensors syn synchronized? Yes. Yeah, okay. because uh, we have uh, interesting things to 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 discuss here. For example. Uh, you can imagine that in the house uh, you have the, the sound of the people waking up, the, the, the person, uh, of the person cooking, of the person having lunch, of the person watching TV. Yeah, but for example, the, the sound of the person talking uh, via phone uh, is quite similar to the TV uh, already, you know, if it's, if it's mm -hmm. on, for example. Or another thing we, we found is that despite it's, it's a flat and it's a quiet flat, the neighbors are not really noisy, but we have always uh, in two rooms, the sound of the cars just passing uh, in the street, the pass by. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, if you have all the sensors synchronized, uh, you can identify uh, not only uh, by the spectrum, but also by the, the, the type of um, the, the type of sound. Yeah, the, for example, the, the TV is always or in the dining room or in the bedroom, it has two of them. So. These, these things of uh, knowing uh, the distribution of the of the flat uh, helps us to, to to the first approach of, of what is happening there. But it's not doing a beam farming somehow. It just it just feed the the data and the the algorithm figures it out. Yeah. Now, now we are uh, from the acoustics point of view, we are working with the equivalent levels in the different rooms. Yeah, kind of. Um, uh, seeing uh, during the time how these levels move so that you can infer somehow from these levels moving if the person is just around the house. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and it's quite, uh, it's quite a good first approximation, quite a good first approximation, because you have to take into account that an old person does not move as, as we probably move in our home. They move slowly, they move less. You know, so so uh, thinking in the application, no, uh, it's it's a first a good first approximation, which we will refine with this idea of behavioral tracking. You know, where we will start to listen what's happening in the in the in every room. So if you if if the levels uh, tell you that probably she is in the dining room, if you listen that she in the dining room she's having lunch, you, you know she is in the dining room. You 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 mm, do not uh think she is there you, you already know because you have the data okay but but this this will be um this will be uh, uh, analyzed uh, in the proper sensor so no 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 raw acoustic data will go out from any sensors in of the house just levels which mm -hmm. i mean we have to protect this but but it's not as as uh, critical as as the of course so that's the raw acoustic data is collected but it's it's processed in situ in all the sensors. 
this is another of the of the um, of the requirements that uh, today uh, says us that we will probably need all the sensors working together, not not only, uh, not not by by different sequences. Okay. Also, we already six minutes past the, yeah. the hour. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> said, the, the, no, the questions come and we th there is always good discussion in the end, though, as I said, really interesting uh, subject that you brought to us. Uh, I will open to one last question if, uh, if there is any, otherwise. Uh, there's there a question in YouTube. But I'm, I'm not sure what's this related. Is this more a machine learning problem or a DSP problem? Uh, this is about the first, the first one about the cow. Uh, is this, uh, if she was trying to extract uh, features. I, I, yeah, I already did it. Ah, okay. that without uh, reading to that. Well, I guess uh, so with that, we, we close all the questions. So once again, thank you very much, Rosa, for accepting the invitation and for showing us this uh, super interesting branch of acoustics or uh, real-time audio processing that uh, helps uh, on acoustic, uh, on acoustic uh, applications. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you. we want to give you a hand of applause uh, as a thank you. Thank you. <laughs>